Shortly after the other video, I actually went and watched a demo video for the Axis, which I had already seen before, but had kind of forgotten about the technique of playing a scale in a certain way so that it goes straight up instead of veering off at an angle. All you have to do is play it in groups of four, and then three, and then four, and then three. And it just goes straight up. So I just Put the keys back the way I had it before, as far as the, these light blue keys being right here, right in the middle there. Um, and then the only difference is I, I put the white keys, if you can tell the difference, these are kind of white and these are gray, according to how they had it in the first place, how uh, the axis comes with the white keys and the gray keys just kind of going straight up. It didn't make sense putting anything at an angle. Um, so, and you know it still looks like it's going off to the left, there's really no, no way to avoid that other than something I'll talk about in a second that I was going to try. These duplicate notes are always going to be in the same physical place. Uh, there's no way to remap the note numbers on here. Uh, not to be confused with remapping the actual tuning that I'm triggering with the note numbers, which I'm completely doing in the computer. So the reason <clears throat> these the octaves kind of appear to be slanting to the right is just simply because they're closer together in that direction, so your eye just kind of catches it going off to the right. Um, these, since they're 13 tones instead of 12, it's instead of... Instead of falling here like the octaves did, it's going to be one further to the right. So they're each shifted one to the right, so you know, and it adds up so that it, it just en ends up appearing like it's landed to the left. When it really, that's just something you have to ignore. You get kind of get visually used to it. I was going to use a program called Max, which is named after the father of computer music, Max Matthews. Um, in my computer to remap the actual note numbers so that the layout would be slightly different. In other words, I wanted it so that this would be shifted over one so that like this whole row would be over one, this whole row would be over two, three, four, five, six, and so on and so forth, so that they'd all be shifted over. But I just realized after some trial and error looking on paper, it wouldn't work out that way. Uh, the, the fact that it's an uneven number kind of completely messes things up. But this way is better anyway. So it's good when, when you come to the conclusion that what you're stuck with is the best of possible worlds anyway. Now I have another way that I would actually rather this be that's completely different, which I'm too constrained within limitations to even do at all. I'll show you that in a second. But for now, this works out pretty well. Now, I could play my, my lambda mode scale that I talked about in the other video just by skipping the black keys. <laughs> it's not very easy. Um, this is definitely going to take some practice. Thank you. 
only some interesting patterns you can visually play that make chords that are very useful. Um, I've noticed that if you play a triangle like that, that's one chord, and this almost sounds like a very compatible chord. I'm going to need to write these down um, and kind of look at it in comparison to a, a regular keyboard that I'm more used to looking at and look at the frequency ratios and see what, what I'm really playing because my ears aren't working right now. Um, I mean, I'm playing stuff that sounds normal. I can certainly play stuff that sounds very alien. For instance, there's an uh, interval that I would suggest avoiding unless you really want to scare your audience, which is this near octave. I'm sorry. <laughs> there it is. So it's like kind of flatter than an octave. So if you keep going, it bends your ear down. Um, now I think I've used that in a composition. It's, you can kind of use a combination of it, maybe with... You know, you can use it if you want to create some serious tension. Um, and just the, the intervals themselves. You know, they're kind of sounding normal to me now, but I'm so used to it. I imagine most people it sounds very strange. Um, oh, I love it. Oh, sorry, I needed another coffee break. take some, some uh, piano lessons on this thing. Now, as you can see, the lambda mode is all the white keys from C to C, and that's what I just played up and down. So let me just talk for a second about the, the way this tuning was derived. I've got this tape on here just to kind of demonstrate the note ratios, the actual frequency ratios. Um, the first inventor of the tuning, Heinz Bolin, was a microwave engineer, and this is in the 70s, okay? He wasn't a musician at all, but he somehow ended up with the with a group of friends and he became their sound engineer. And he certainly had an interest in music, he just wasn't a musician. He was curious why musicians would always use 12 notes per octave. And he thought, well, all you have to do is ask his professional musician friends this simple question, and surely they would just answer it. So of course he asked them, why do you just use 12 notes per octave? And as, as typical musicians, so we'll either, you know, what do you mean? <laughs> well, that's the scale we use. Or, you know, that's the scale I was brought up with, or that's the only scale. What do you mean, why don't I use another scale? And he quickly realized musicians were the wrong people to ask a kind of technical, scientific question like that. Um, so he proceeded, long story short, he proceeded to learn about music theory and harmony and harmonics and just all he needed to know to technically get down to the bottom of why 